thunderbolt and lightning very very frightening there was a song to that effect many years ago my guests this evening used to enjoy a good thunderstorm and then they went into the insurance business from a typhoon that hit the philippines to floods and a slight earth tremor in south africa over the last week or so adverse weather patterns and other natural disasters causing havoc and damage with billions of rand across the world if the u.s national research council report is to be believed the consequences of these events are expected to increase with climate change posing a threat greater than those from terrorism ranging from massive food shortages to a rise in armed conflict tonight on tonight with me bruce whitfield we take a look at the personal insurance costs and tips on insurance cover for the possible onslaught of summer i'm joined by two chief executives the first is willem Roos, chief executive of outsurance and the other is anton ossip the chief executive of discovery insure both of you probably used to enjoy a good thunderstorm you'd see the clouds building on the horizon you'd hear the distant thunder the lightning would come you'd take a, your favorite drink and watch the storm go by anton ossip you can't enjoy that anymore can you because you just see money flowing out the door when that happens for sure bruce certainly things have changed um you know it's one of the consequences i guess of uh, being in the industry um but definitely things have changed in terms of how we perceive storms Vilibris, do you believe in climate change Yes, Bruce, I do. Um, I, I definitely think um, global warming is a fact and we've seen global temperatures rise and with high temperature you get more precipitation and that really causes, uh, uh, was a contributory cause to these uh, events. How much of it is global warming and how much of it is just randomness from year to year, I think that's impossible uh, uh, to, to, to distinguish. So to proactively go and adjust premiums and so on, I, I, I'm not sure you should do, do that. But I want to get on to how we then price for the risk of change in a couple of moments' time. I'm just interested in the trends that you're seeing in the 1950s, the 1960s. I remember the 70s and the 80s, there were violent and vigorous thunderstorms, huge storm action around the globe. Are things really changing at all? Uh, definitely. I think if you look locally, if you look at the intensity of the hailstorms, particularly the ones we've seen over the last two years, um, we always saw hailstorms. I mean, I think the statistic is about 70 sort of significant hailstorms, you know, per year in the sort of Gauteng um, area. But the intensity of the size of the hailstones that we're seeing are much, much greater. Um, you know, as an example, the, the worst hailstorm we had was in 1985. 1985. 1985 yeah. cost the industry about 400 million. Um, last year's house storm in October cost the industry over a billion um, and sort of nothing of that magnitude up to then. So, um, so certainly we are seeing much, much greater intensity of, of storms coming through. But it's not predictable and that's the problem because here you have a huge hailstorm in 1985. The next really big significant hailstorm that causes significant uh, damage, Willem, is then, um, I'll let you do the maths, uh, nearly 30 years later. Yep. Um, and that's the trouble with these things is there's no consistency, there's no predictability. Correct, and, and, and therefore uh, you basically need to have a look at what the claims were the previous year and then try and make sure that you get enough premiums for the next year. What well, us as insurers also do is we buy reinsurers to cushion uh, that blow. So we take a portion of our premium income, we give it to the big global reinsurers and if we have storms like these we can make a, re a recovery from them. Obviously our reinsurance costs then go up but over time that helps us you know, to smooth out the, the, the premium increases. But more weather related event, events will try Translate to higher insurance costs and higher premiums. I'm delighted that you talk about reinsurance because that gives us the global perspective. Here we have um, Typhoon Haiyan, which is the most powerful storm ever recorded. It's smacked into the Philippines, it's killed two and a half thousand people, caused an enormous amount of damage. Now, we sit here in South Africa and we think, oh, terrible tropical storms it, you know, we've had big uh, cyclones and tornadoes through America Sardinia this little island in the Mediterranean got hit by a hurricane in the last couple of days in the Philippines they get hit by the most powerful storm in history isn't that terrible but it does affect us here doesn't it Anton yeah certainly the cost of reinsurance is as to global costs so you know global reinsurers will be looking at their losses across the world um, you know, from you know, from the U.S. hurricanes, which is normally the, probably the most costly of all sort of big catastrophes. But this reinsurance concept is interesting because both of you will buy reinsurance. So I I come to you, one of you, and I say I'd like to insure my car, please, against hail damage and all other kinds of damage. I pay you a premium. You take part of that premium, and you then go to a Munich Re or to a Hanover Re. These reinsurance companies globally, you take some of my premium. You give it to them just in case we have a calamity here. You need some support from offshore as do all other insurers around the world. They do the same thing. Yeah. So actually, I'm paying for some of the costs of the, of the typhoon in the Philippines, effectively. Yeah, correct, indirectly. I mean, it's obviously a massive sort of insurance market globally. Um, and I think also one must remember that there's 
they're big losses, but not all of them are insurable losses. So unfortunately, sometimes the biggest losses are in populations that aren't actually mm. purchasing insurance. Um, so it's not always sort of a direct correlation between, between the two. In fact, the US sort of hurricane season is normally the most costly from an insurance perspective. Because it's in an insured part of the world. Many Correct. disasters, of course, hit poorer parts of the world where there isn't a developed insurance market. But there is an indirect correlation between bad global weather and the price I pay to insure my car in South Africa. It's a bizarre concept. Let's talk about, um, about the size of storms. I mean, you guys in the insurance industry will talk about a category one hailstorm. Um, and this is what, a hailstone smaller than a pea probably. That's fairly normal. It's not gonna do any real damage. It gets interesting where um, in the last two weeks we've seen a yet another big hailstorm in Gauteng um, where we've got called it what, a category five, golf ball size hailstones. Now this is getting quite serious. Are we seeing a higher incidence, Willem? in these sorts of storms here in South Africa? Uh, correct, look, uh, uh, as Anton said, we've seen three of those uh, storms in the past uh, a year or so, whereas in the previous 15 years, we didn't see any. Now, is that the beginning of a trend? Uh, I think we, we need to be careful to, to, to make that, uh, that, that assumption, but, but certainly globally, worldwide, weather events seem to become more severe than they used to be. Right, how then do you, as insurers, price for that? Because is it a trend? Well, you can take advantage of it. Say, look, one, one point is a point, two points are a line, and three are a trend. So therefore, we need to protect ourselves as insurance companies. Let's bump up insurance rates by 15% next year, whatever the case might be. We've got to protect ourselves. Yeah. I mean, Discovery Insure, what we've tried to do is um, both, obviously, we've got to be concerned about the consequences, but it's a try to be proactive. So what we do is we send out storm alerts where we try to predict within half an hour um, of a hail event, which we can do with a reasonable amount of certainty to try to prevent those vehicles being you on the You send SMSs out to people to say, get your car under cover. Correct. He, he, ha, 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 here comes big trouble. Yeah, and we think it is having an effect to some extent, but obviously you can't, you can't get 100% you know, accuracy around that. Um, but then the consequences of it is dealing with those hail claims, dealing with them as quickly as possible. I think one of the biggest consequences is this limited capacity to deal with such an event. You know, there are only so many people that can fix hail claims of that mm. quantity and we, you know, many insurance companies are still dealing with the consequences of 2012. They really a year later are still finishing up the, on those on those claims. Yeah. So that's an issue to deal with. And then as, as Willem said, you've got to be careful about, um, you know, predicting this as the trend and just necessarily pricing it in. But on the other hand, you need to ensure that, you know, premiums are adequate to pay for the ultimate claims. How do the risk models work then? How do you do it, Willem? What's the big secret? Yeah, the, 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 our philosophy is really to look at the past statistical data. We actually take out these big storms. We assume, sh assume some allowance for it, but, but uh, not, not to the fullest extent. And then based on that, you know, and then it's currency movements and average repair costs and a whole host of other things we would build in. In fact, the weather might not even be the biggest of those, those, uh, those factors. So you build a complex actuarial model, statistical model and project it forward. And the only thing you're sure of that's not going to be 100% accurate. Absolutely. Yeah? <laughs> you're, more, you're more likely to be involved in a bumper bashing than you are to be caught in a hailstorm. Probably Probably. Exactly. I mean, on, on the balance of probabilities. So how important then is the weather when it comes to calculating the impact on insurance? Certainly, I mean, it depends if, if, if sort of these kind of storms You're continue. not an economist, you're an insurance <laughs> person. You have to give me an answer. Yeah, it is important. It is important. It's, um, it's one of the important factors. Accidents obviously trump everything else. Um, but storms of the intensity we see now are, will become more and more expensive if they continue at this intensity. If it's just a freak a sort of, you know, year and a half period, which obviously we'd all like to think it is the case, then it won't be too expensive. It depends well, uh, half and they have. I focus mostly on, on motor insurance, but household insurance, of course, in mm. areas where there is a higher propensity for natural disasters, of course, is right. also uh, significant. We had a little earth tremor the other day. I don't know if you felt it. And it's just a gentle reminder that the world is a living um, organism. We, we're not prone to huge earthquakes. I think probably the last big South African earthquake was in Tilbach yeah. in 1967 or, or thereabouts, where uh, the earth shook quite severely. Um, that's not a massive uh, sort of effect when it comes to insurance in South Africa. I would think. No, in, in, in South Africa that's, that's pretty small and most of the events we get is actually mining induced mm. um, because uh, 
uh, ground below Gauteng is, is pretty much the uh, mind all over there. It's all yes. over. <laughs> um, so, so in South Africa, we're fortunate. I suppose it, it could still happen and uh, you would be covered if an earthquake damages your house, I think, which is Im Im important to note as well. Mm, but it's, w it's weather related. I mean, homes are damaged in severe storms. Yeah. We may not ha we have lots of low-lying insured homes on riverbanks and all of that sort of thing, as you might see in the U.S. Midwest when the, uh, when the Mississippi River overflows. You just see how people sitting on their roofs. We don't have too much of that. Yeah. Um, but we certainly, from hailstorms and stuff, you've had to deal with some fairly severe claims in terms of people's roofs getting damaged, windows getting smashed, uh, that sort of stuff. Yeah, certainly. I mean, last Monday we had a number of those. So we had several, several hundred houses damaged, solar panels, windows, you know, Roof, house, you know, roofs seriously damaged in terms of the hailstorm, but I think also the the floods of the Western Cape last weekend mm. um, left a lot of houses underwater, um, hospitals underwater. There was significant hundreds of millions of rands worth of damage done by those by those floods. So even though we don't have the, you know the size of the Mississippi, we have other concerns. Well, it feels like and again, it's the, the rain in, in the Western Cape is going on later this year. Do you price that in for next year, or do you wait for next year before you start factoring that in to no, insurance no, premiums? No, we wait, we, we wait for next year. Look, I think one thing which consumers want is for their insurance premiums rather to be stable over time and, and, and sort of have more measured increases mm -hmm. than something that, that fluctuates uh, a lot. You know, that's what insurers are there for. We're also there to absorb some of the volatility and we have our risk management uh, in place like reinsurance to, to, to be yeah. able to, uh, to absorb that volatility. And again, coming back, you know, on cars, weather related events, probably quite a bit less than 20% of the total premiums were on homes, it will be two, two and a half times that. So, you know, big accidents and, 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 and these types of things still has a bigger influence on, on uh, insurance premiums. For what sort of inflation person. rates are we looking at in over the next couple of years in terms of personal lines insurance? Are we looking uh, high single digits, mid single digits? Where are we looking? I mean, I'd say probably low single digits. What's mm -hmm. it, okay, oh, sorry, it, low it, double digits. It, low double digits. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, you were exciting digits. me for a second. Yeah, low double digits, so probably sort of 10, but that's, 10 12. I mean, that's twice the rate of inflation. Yeah, it's I'm rand dollar inflation. Okay. I think will have okay. a bigger effect there. I have a bit of a bit of a different view. I I, I think actually it's probably going to be very low the average premium inflation going forward. I think this past year is a bit different. There's been weather-related mm -hmm. events and and the rand has depreciated, so the imported cost of, of parts will, will will have an influence. But we also see uh, accident frequencies coming down. Uh, our highways are better. They better let uh, uh, cars have a lot of safety. Uh, 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 technological advances, making them safer and so on. So, uh, so I actually think over time, I think it's one of the big challenges our industry faces is that premiums per customer is probably going to increase at a pace lower than inflation if you take a five or ten year view. Well, unless you want uh, some nice treasury intervention, I would suggest that's probably not a bad idea. Certainly the National Treasury wants more of us to be insured to take pressure off it, of course, in terms of helping us out with the road accident fund and things like that. Thank you for joining us this evening and hopefully you'll be better prepared for the summer weather and also forearmed is forewarned or forewarned is forearmed as well. Now, thanks again to my guests, Willem Rus, who is the Chief Executive of Outsurance and Anton Ossip, who is the Chief Executive of Discovery Insure. Thanks for watching. Keep your head down. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Good night.